Welcome to Raised on D&D Podcast. Twice a month, Raised on D&D brings you inspirational interviews, tips, and strategies to enhance your family's gaming experience. Your host for Raised on D&D has been a game master for 30 years and father to three gamers. Here is Nick Cartarelli. Welcome back, gamers. I'm your host, Nick Cartarelli, and this is Raised on D&D. My next guest is originally from Duluth, Minnesota, but for the past 13 years has lived on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. She's addicted to flavor text, obsessed with backstory, and is an avid writer and qualified copywriter. She recently published her first collaboration on the DMs Guild called Big Bees. Handbook of Creative Spell Use, which is currently sitting at gold bestseller. She was also a contributor to Alan Tucker's art-inspired monster collection on Kickstarter. She's currently in the very early stages of two new projects for DMs Guild. You know her online as D-Bags of Holding. Please welcome Deanna Adams. Hi, D. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. And thank you so much for being on the show today. So, Dee, we're so excited. Um, the book is going gold on DMs Guild. And I know there's a lot of fans listening, and we're going to talk about the book in just a moment. But first, we want to kind of get to know you more as a gamer. Can you take us back to when you first were introduced to tabletop role playing games, when you first discovered Dungeons and Dragons, and how that how your passion for Dungeons and Dragons began? Um, it's actually interesting because you just said Dungeons and Dragons about four times. But my first introduction into uh, tabletop role playing was actually um, a RPG called In Nomine. Uh, so yeah. basically, I had my first um, proper campaign. So I, I was introduced to it before that um, in a one off game. It was a D20 modern game. But my first proper campaign um, shortly happened after I had given birth to my first child. Uh, so that was around 11 years ago. And um, I think I was looking for something that I could do with my husband that didn't require getting a babysitter <laughs> because babysitters are expensive. Um, and, you know, we had a little baby at home and uh, I kind of felt like I still wanted that social aspect of my life and, and couldn't get out of the house, just yes. trying to figure that out in that part of my life. Um, and so uh, my husband had suggested that we um, go over to a friend's house. It was one of his friends. I hadn't met him yet. And his name was Justin, Justin Johnston. So um, you might actually notice that name is one of the um, – uh, well, the main name for Bigby's handbook. Um, so that was when I first met Justin, who I ended up collaborating with on the book. But we went over to his house and he was running um, a campaign uh, for In Nomine. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with In Nomine, but it's... Uh, um, just, just a little bit. I've seen it in passing in comic book and game stores. Tell us a little bit about In Nomine. Yeah, so In Nomine uses uh, what they call it a D666 rolling system. So you have three D6, uh, and essentially you play as either angels or demons, and it's set in a, a modern world. Um, and the 3D6 system was actually quite interesting. Um, so you have the first two dice, uh, which are compared to a target DC, and then the last die is the degree in which you succeed or fail with that that um, target DC. Um, so, and then depending on if you were an angel or a demon, if you roll a triple six um, or a triple one, that was like the, um, the epic fail or epic success in the game. So essentially my very first campaign and my very first introduction into role playing, I never actually touched a D20 um, at all. <laughs> <laughs> and fast forwarding though, how many children do you have now? So um, my oldest is 11. Um, I have three children now. Uh, the youngest is seven. And then um, I have a son who's nine. Um, and then my oldest is a girl. She's 11. So two girls, one boy, uh, seven, nine, and 11. You can tell we've, we planned that. We are very organized with the, um, the procedure <laughs> of conception. Um, but yeah, and we're done now. That's, that's it. <laughs> 
better better job than us. We're, ours are all 17 months apart, so they're right back to back to back. And I've got a, a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 12-year-old. How old were the children when you decided to introduce them to tabletop role-playing games? So uh, it's a tricky question because officially it's only been about three months. Um, we, we've we just kind of realized that our youngest is at that age where she can engage and and, and kind of understand the idea of role playing. Um, but, you know, prior to that, obviously we were playing all sorts of games with them. Um, there was a period of time actually that my husband, Jason and I really got into live action role playing. Um, so where we live in Australia on the Sunshine Coast, um, by the way, if you Google Sunshine Coast on Google Maps, nothing will show up. Um, it's because the Sunshine Coast is a region and there's about 50,000 towns or cities in that region. Um, and it's literally, you know, I live in a, a town called Perriera. And if I look across the road, that is um, Warana. And then if I walk 100 meters down the road, I'll be in Bedina. And then 50 meters past that is Minyama. So there's lots of little towns, but if you ask anyone, we're from the sunny coast or the sunshine coast. Um, but yeah, so where we are, it's kind of a, a smaller, kind of sleepy surfer town sort of vibe. And, um, you know, there isn't, you know, any big comic cons or anything like that in this area. The closest is um, Brisbane, which is uh, the main city in Queensland. Um, and, uh, that's about an hour and a half away. So we've, we had, um, we have things like supernova, which I think is only Australia, but that's like a, it's Australia's version of a big comic-con. We also have comic-con as well. And we have PAX, um, Australia, right. but that's never in Queensland. That's always down in Sydney or Melbourne. But, um, yeah, so we, my husband and I, at some point, we were introduced into live action role playing when we went to um, PAX in Melbourne. And we had this idea of bringing a convention to the Sunshine Coast um, and giving it more of that hands on feel. So, uh, you know, a lot of times when you go to a con, it's it's spending a lot of money to get signatures and standing in lines and shopping for you know, cool stuff and buying stuff from local artists. All of that's great. But I, I, myself and my husband are kind of more of that, like hands-on sort of person. And I remember going to the first packs that happened in Australia and, um, you know, demoing games and, and doing all that stuff and thinking, well, this is like really, really fun. And um, so we wanted to kind of bring, I guess, a more active version of a con to our region, which is a very active region. We've got surfers, we've got, you know, a lot of people that like to get outdoors and swim and do mountain climbs and things like that. So we wanted to kind of incorporate that into the, you know, the essential uh, Comic-Con sort of concept. Um, and so we thought live action role playing was the way to go. We did run um, a convention here on the Sunshine Coast for a while. It was called Epic DM. Um, wow. And it was restructured at one point for one year under the um, local council as manifest. Um, and uh, a big thing, at, uh, a, a big part of that was the live action role playing. Um, and so anyhow, when we were doing that, we invested a lot of money into um, swords and weapons and armor, which is still sitting in my garage today. <laughs> and um <laughs> Now, basically, all we use it for is uh, we go out with the kids and run around in the yard and, you know, invite the friends over and whack them with the, these silicone swords for 20 minutes until they all get really tired. But, um, yeah, so as far as, sorry, that was a very long-winded explanation, but um, as far as uh, introducing our kids, their probably first experience was with live-action role-playing, um, and that would have been a few years ago. But just recently, we've started doing a proper campaign. So my husband is the DM, um, and it's a, a 5e campaign. Um, and uh, we all have our own characters. 
So mine is um, a cleric named Alma. My youngest, she's a sorcerer, but her name is Miss Wizard because she wanted to be Miss Wizard, but she, her class is a sorcerer. And uh, it's really cute because she does this thing where she speaks in a very fancy voice and she goes, oh, darling, oh, darling, I'm going to cast a spell. Darling, are you okay? Darling, let's go fight these goblins and kill them. Yes, darling, let's do that. And it's, it's adorable to see her get into the, the role play side of it and, and get really into it. And my son is a, a barbarian, as you would expect any nine-year-old boy would choose. And uh, my oldest... Um, Oh, she's a wood elf ranger, and she's got um, a lizard, like a giant, not giant, but a large bearded dragon as her animal companion, because we own a bearded dragon, so. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you guys bring the bearded dragon to the table for the games? She did that for the first campaign, but he kept, like, jumping off and running across the table, and it was very distracting, <laughs> so we, we abandoned that, you know quite quickly and said, this is the whole point. Use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, a homebrew campaign or are you guys using a book uh, adventure? Always a homebrew in this house. Uh, so <laughs> I think um, both my husband and I, um, you know, now we've gotten to the point where we've both DM'd, you know, a number of times in our, our lives, but we, um, we both like that aspect of the creative freedom to create anything. So, um, you know, some people like to power game. Some people like to, um, you know, have epic battles and roll dice. Uh, me personally, I like making up backstories and putting flavor text to pictures, um, creating different names, um, doing puzzles, you know, role playing, uh, my husband's really good at making up accents, and um, he's also a really good drawer, so he likes to draw all the characters. So, you know, we really attach to that um, that aspect of an RPG, you know, the, the role-playing side. Uh, that being said, my husband also likes to power game. He wouldn't admit it, but he's definitely a power gamer. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a homebrew campaign right now, and um, we've just kind of really gotten into the the meat of it but um yeah yeah we actually we probably play games three or four times a week so i can't even keep track of some of the things that we're doing right now because we have our our weekly D, &D with our friends on tuesday nights um once a month on a wednesday so the last no first wednesday of every month is the kids D, &D night um, and then we have Friday night um, board game night, which is kind of a mix of everything. Um, and then uh, my husband's in a Saturday King's Dilemma board game group. I'm not part of that one. Um, then we somehow find, a find time at least every week and a half or so to do Gloomhaven in our Gloomhaven group, um, which originally was the Descent group. But... Um, a few, a few of the our friends weren't fans of it. They, they didn't like, they felt like they couldn't really get anywhere. I told them that uh, we were basically just tricking them into playing D&D, &D, um, which I feel like we're doing with Gloomhaven as well, but I haven't told them that yet because yes. they don't, they think, they think d and is too nerdy for them, but little do they know they're playing it right now when we play Gloomhaven. Um, but yeah, so with the descent, we, we played it a couple times. Um, two of the people in our group didn't really like it. They felt they were a bit restricted, but the, cause the board and the, the little, um, characters and stuff are so cool. Um, my husband's been using them for the kids D and D campaign. So he's kind of, wow. I think making up a story as he goes, but he's looking at what he's got from the board game and, thinking, oh, what can I do with this, you know, these cool little goblins and, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, he's been kind of using that as inspiration to progress the story along. And that's fantastic because 
maps and miniatures are so important uh, to young players because that visualization is there and they're able to see because if you started off years ago without miniatures and maps and things like that you know it was oh uh, how far is the bad guy from me or the goblins 10 feet away well how far away is 10 feet someone go stand over there so we know what 10 feet looks like yeah. you know that kind of yeah. thing but the miniatures makes it so much easier for the children to visualize and see oh that that's a real threat and it's near me and that sort of thing so that's terrific uh, and the yeah. fact that he's able to take the board game uh, and use it in a different way so that he can play Dungeons and Dragons with them is terrific. Now, yeah. my family, we we did our very first campaign. And again, it was homebrew like you guys are doing. And really what I was trying to do was just kind of get them familiar with some of the classic D&D monsters. So I'm introducing them to trolls and owl bears and things like that. And uh, but I, but like you were saying, the puzzles, the role play, those are some of the, the best moments with the kids. I think we went to the city of Greyhawk and we went to the Green Dragon Inn and one of the best gaming uh, sessions we had was in the inn and they just for the most part, it was just role play and interacting with NPCs. There was a, a, a small bar brawl and things like that, but immersive role playing moments were some of the greatest of the, those, uh, those early campaigns. So the whole family gets together. You guys are playing a ton of games. What are, what are some of the life lessons that you're hoping the children will take away from the time spent together with you and your husband at the table? Oh, that's a, that's a heavy question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think we wanted something. So, um, I guess a priority for my husband and I is we do something, um, and because we're, we're church going people, our church encourages um, a thing called family home evening, which is dedicating one night a week, um, you know, to just being with your family and prioritizing being together and doing something um, together. And so that, that was where the idea to, to do a D and D campaign from the kids came from. And, um, and so I guess I just, you know, sometimes you, you see other families and you see what they do or don't do. And, you know, you kind of see a family that's like, um, you know, their kids are 20 years old, 18 years old, and they're still going to the movies with their parents or going out to dinner with their whole family. And you kind of look onto that and think, Oh man, I hope, I hope my kids want to hang out with me when they're older as well. <laughs> and, um, and so we just wanted our kids to, enjoy doing stuff with us um and that was kind of a priority when we started it that we would do something together um and obviously my husband and i we've gained a lot of joy from having role-playing games in our life um we're we're very social creatures and and it really feeds into that that aspect of us and we want our kids to be able to be comfortable and, and have those social skills to just, you know, actually thrive and enjoy being around other people and, and not being afraid to be a little bit different and, and be a bit confident in doing something new or acting a different way. And um, yeah, that's, I think that's what we were hoping to get from it. I do think that's what we are getting from it. Um, I guess surprising secondary uh, benefits that have come from it is my kids are really kind of gaining their own self-confidence. Um, and also I've realized my, my son is pretty good at math. <laughs> so we, cause we, we've been trying to do a simplified version of, of five E. So sometimes my husband will just say, you know, roll the dice and I'll tell you what happens. And, you know, he doesn't really kind of look at their character sheet and um, 
have them try to figure out what skills they're proficient in, things like that. You know, especially with our seven year old, it's just kind of like, Oh, roll the dice. And she just knows if it's over 10, like she's probably done really well. If, if it's not, you know, she's going to throw a fit and stump her, her foot. But um, my son is surprisingly, you know, he's like, Oh, what's her proficiency? Like, you know, and, and he'll kind of, you know, he's nine years old. And I, I, I kind of, ex I suppose I anticipated that, they would all need a simplified version, but I've found that he's picking it up really quick, which um, led to us then um, having a bit of a tutorial with Magic the Gathering because we thought, oh, okay, well, if he can pick this up, then he might be able to now understand, you know, how Magic the Gathering works and, you know, power and toughness and, you know, equating special abilities and putting on plus one counters and, um, yeah, he's picking it up quite quickly. So that would be one of those secondary benefits. You're like, hey, you know, maybe I should put my son in mathletes or something. <laughs> That's fantastic. And we want to talk about the book. So how I know I know that you've been a gamer for many, many years now, but how is it that you got in on the project? How was it that you uh, were inspired to, to write the, write this book? Well, I, I would have to credit that to probably Justin. <laughs> so, um, one of the people that we, um, often on do campaigns with in D and D is, is Justin Johnston. He's part of, uh, he kind of floats in and out of our Tuesday D and D group. And the last time that he was in, you know, maybe a few years ago, he said, Oh, I've started doing some, you know, collaborations and contributions on DMs Guild. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, he started getting into Roll20 and uh, doing a lot of online campaigns just for random, like putting lots of hours into it. Um, and uh, I think we we're, I, I was always kind of like, Oh, yeah, cool. Like, I don't have time for that. But I mean, it's cool that you're doing it and, and everything. And I think, I at that point I had never touched a book on DMs Guild. Like, didn't even never even looked at it um, as a as a resource because you know, like I said, my like Jason and I, we love to just make up our own stuff, um, and so we kind of just do our own thing and you know, kind of try to create as much as we can on our own. And uh, so it never really occurred to me to look for other resources. And then um, I, I started, I was DMing a campaign for 5e. I think it might've been the first 5e campaign that I was DM for. And um, it went, so basically the way that our group works is we take turns DMing and we usually run like a campaign that will run for six months and then we pass the torch to the next person. Um, what well, we were used to then nobody gets the DM burnout. Nobody's the permanent yeah. DM stuck behind the screen. None of that, you, uh, that rotation that's terrific. So you've got a group, uh, not only of players, but you've got a group of dungeon masters who are comfortable doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually really nice. And we all have, I guess, a different sort of style so, I mean, as players as well, you kind of get into this predictive area of knowing exactly what your DM is going to do. And then it's nice to kind of finish up a story and then move on to something else. And for me personally, I need to know everything. Like, I, I just want to know. So if you introduce a, a campaign to me and say, you know, and start off with a mystery, that will consume me for the entire six months. I need to know the answer to that mystery. I cannot last for a 10 year campaign of slowly leveling up a character. And then maybe if we remember in 10 years, I'm going to get that tidbit of information that I was introduced with in, in you know, campaign session zero. I need to know. So I, I, I love that we do that because then I know at least after six months, I'm going to get my answers. And if I don't, I will be very vocal about it. And I will ask the questions and I'll be like, redo that ending. 
I need a finale where this, this, and this is answered because I need to know the answers. I've written them down in my notebook and they have to be answered. Um, so there is no, um, I guess, cliffhanger <laughs> for me. But um, yeah, so we, we do a rotation every six months and sometimes we, we go away from D&D. So we also, probably the second most frequent RPG we play is Feng Shui, um, okay. which I love. I love Feng Shui. I, like if I had the ability or the, the power or the influence to um, convince, I, I don't even know who has the license for that anymore. I don't think Robin Laws has the license, but if I could convince them to allow me to redo the book and, and do a campaign for, for Feng Shui, um, you know, and a new manual, I would love to do it. Um, because I love the mechanics in there and I love the, fr the creative freedom that you have in that. Um, but anyhow, so we go between Feng Shui and D and D. Um, and the last time Very cool. uh, when, when 5e kind of started being introduced into our, um, group, we had this, dis we kind of decided, Oh, let's do, um, uh, you know, six month turns, um, but build up to epic level characters uh, because um, JJ, Justin, wanted to um, use the the epic um, d d epic level book that's on DMs Guild. Um, and uh, he wanted he wanted us to kind of use utilize that. Um, so anyhow, when it was my turn, I think I was I was 10 to 20 and they were doing the epic level stuff. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, we started at level 10. But I was doing the first six months, and because I knew that I was then passing the torch and it was supposed to be a continua continuation of the story, I really wanted to make sure that I was as organized as possible. So I finally went on to DM Skilled and was like, I want to get some cool one-offs and I want to you know, download some little side stories. And I guess my, my method was always you know, pull a few kind of um, – one-off campaign ideas from there and kind of use them, but mostly just use the stats and everything that they had or the special abilities that they had for their creations. And then I would, you know, rejig the story to fit into what I wanted it to be. Um, uh, and then I got a little bit addicted to looking through DMs Guild and seeing all the cool stuff that people were producing. <laughs> um, and, and then it was kind of um, at the time I was looking for, a job. So I was a full-time stay-at-home mom up until about 10 months ago. So at that time, I was looking for full-time work or part-time permanent work. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, I can't be a stay-at-home mom if my kids aren't at home anymore. <laughs> They're at school. So I wanted to find some work um, and I was really struggling because it, you know, it had been 12 years since um, I'd held a job and I have a degree. Um, I'm a qualified copywriter, but it just was not, um, just not happening. So I um, asked JJ about, I was like, Hey, you know, could I jump in on, and you know, like not, not trying to make millions of dollars, but I've got the free time. I actually really enjoy writing. It's one of the things that I, I want to do. Um, I, and I said, you know, maybe the next thing you do can, could I be a part of it? And you, you know, he's such a supportive guy. Like JJ is one of those people that he just wants people involved and, and he wants to share his um, experiences and, and his good luck. And, you know, he's just a share. He just wants everyone to, to be able to experience the joy that he experiences. And so um, he said, oh yeah, like my, my next collab, like I'll, I'll get you in on it. And I'm not joking, 15 minutes after I asked him that, it was at the D&D table at, on our Tuesday night campaign. 15 minutes after that, he gets a message from someone on his current book that he was working on that says, I can't do this anymore. I've got to drop out. And, and wow. he was like, whoa. And they were, they were well and truly into it. Um, and uh, that was Big Beast. And he said, hey, would you like to, to get in on, the, on this idea? And I was like, whoa, like really like throwing me in there. Like I, was, I thought, kind of thought there would be a planning process. And he was like, no, no, you'll be fine. Like 
just just get into it. By the way, you're going to have to produce most of your content in the next like two, three weeks. And I was like, uh, okay. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was how I got onto the, the Big Bees group. Um, and so it was a collaboration with pretty much all Australians. Um, I like to consider myself Australian now. I've been here for 13 years. I'm an Australian citizen, so I don't sound it. But, you know, I, I like to be included in that group. They're all very welcome, welcoming. And we identify as the Australian authors of Big B's Handbook. Um, but um, just a cool group of guys that just, you know, it was so fun. Just even as soon as I was put into that message group, just the brainstorming and the bouncing off and, and the banter and, you know, just kind of that creative hub of ideas and, and laughter and enthusiasm i it got me so jacked up like i was just this is awesome like and it really um it wasn't hard to write for that because you know they were just so encouraging so supportive but like quirky you know funny and and just you know like you'd say something like hey i'm trying to think of a a combination with these two spells i feel like there's something cool that could be done here and then 80 messages later like in five seconds, you'd have 80 responses from these guys and, you know, they'd just be kind of bouncing ideas and, and it was great. It was such a cool environment to work with. So we've kind of said as a group that let's do something again together because it, it was just such an enjoyable experience working with all of them. Um, but yeah, so Big Beast Handbook, um, I kind of was thrown in like, you know, just as a thrown in at the, the last minute to replace someone that, that had left. Um, and it just worked out. And the idea was so cool. So the, the idea was um, JJ's, um, where he said, look, I'll, I want to do a book where we, we talk about, you know, spells and working together and how spells can interact with each other and how a team can, you know, um, create that synergy in their spell casting. And uh, such a cool idea, because everyone, you know, if you Google spell combinations, it's it, you can get spell combinations, but the idea of the book was to um, not just be a power gamer and come up with two spells that you know have maximum you know maximum kind of effect. It it was about how a druid and a wizard on the same team could work together and do cool little combinations, and how you could synergize with your team, which was something I never like thought about before I started working on the book. And now I just think it's like the coolest idea ever. And now I'm kind of like, whenever we do build new characters and stuff, I'm like, oh, what are you going to be? Because I might think about being like a, a support, you know, <laughs> a support spellcaster that can play off of what you do. And, and some of the spells in there aren't about maximizing damage or killing the most people in one hit. It's, you know, it's about... Um, you know, making really cool role-playing scenarios or, um, you know, finding alternative ways to use um, common spells that are used a different way or using spells in, in 5e that people don't really use very often and just finding a way to make them cool to use. Um, yeah, and so I, I love the idea and there's probably enough material to make a volume too, to be honest. Well, I love that big B's handbook of creative spell use when you look through it every every gamer i've ever talked to has stories of a, a player usually a new player or a young player thinking outside the box with their spell casting and i i just read recently about a dad whose uh teenagers went up against a werewolf and one of them used levitation on the werewolf so that he couldn't attack them. He basically immobilized the thing. And the, the, he was sharing the story because it was amazing how he used that. And the, the other spellcaster in the group started using magic missile and things like that and was able to wear the werewolf's uh, uh, hit points down that way. So, the 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 dm had prepared this melee monster they had taken its 
melee power away from him by using uh, spell combinations and things like that. And when I was looking at Big Big's handbook of creative spell uses, I thought how wonderful that you guys were able to harness what sometimes is accidents or surprises at the table. And you were able to put it into a volume to help players, like you said, think of that synergy and look at the adventuring party as more of a team. Um, Here we are, ninth level, 13th level. We've gone on all these adventures together. Why is it that the rogue is going, well, rogue and going off, <laughs> uh, off, off map. And, uh, and the, the, the paladin is do, doing his charge when the wizard is still got another round or two before his big spell goes off, you know? So it's like, why aren't we working together as a team? And, and the book puts it all together, puts it there and says, Hey, if we, if we combine our powers and we work together, we can accomplish amazing epic uh, maneuvers. So I think, I think it was wonderful. And I really hope that you guys are able to do a volume two, because this is gold best sell, bestseller on DMs Guild. I can't imagine that a volume two wouldn't do more or better so it's fantastic but you've got some other projects coming up now i know one's top secret you can't tell us much <laughs> about it but there, there's another one coming out you can tell us a little bit about right um well it, it's still in very early stages so um yeah we'll we'll see how we go with it but um my husband jason so he's not um been a contributor on DMs Guild yet, but after after Big B's, uh, which I actually have to say, he was almost a silent writer in Big B's because there was a lot of brainstorming nights where um, he was bouncing ideas off me. In fact, um, I don't know if you're familiar with, so I have a combo in there called Grease Lightning, and it's um it's uh lightning grease and a net, and um, he he was the one who kind of found that that way to use the net, um, but make it, you know, a, a spell attack with lightning damage. Um, and uh, that, that was his, his discovery, actually. So I, I didn't give him credit. This is me officially giving him credit for that one. Um, but that really just started with, I wanted to name something Grace Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the title. So we started with the title and then, um, he was the one who found um, the lightning arrow and, and said, oh, you could change a net to a lightning arrow because it's technically a ranged weapon. And um, yeah, so that, that was his idea. Um, but um, yeah, so he's, he's been working on um, being project lead on this book for a while. Um, we, we don't have, I guess a working title would be, it's a Beastmaster's Guide. Um, that's definitely going to change what it's called. But um, what we wanted to do was um, create like a compendium um, of new beasts. Um, The stats are already there from a really, like really detailed. So we're talking, he's put in a lot of hours already to, to, to build this. Um, But like, you know, CR quarter up to like, you know, CR 10, 11, 12, um, just, just have like, because they're very limited is into like with Druids, um, beast form, like what, what they can actually do, um, comp- animal companions, um, things like that. It's just, there isn't like a huge range that isn't homebrew. Um, and we thought what we wanted to do was, um, put a lot of careful thought into building the stats and, and, um, uh, creating some really cool um, creatures, beasts that that both DMs and players could utilize in their games. Um, but we've also got um, a friend. He's a really talented artist. Um, his name's Gavrosh Stevenson. He uh, just started playing D anD D with our Tuesday night um, group about a month ago. That's really his first foray in, into D and D. Um, but he's actually, um, a contributor for, um, Alan Tucker's, uh, um, 
upcoming book that's on Kickstarter right now um, and Incredible Creatures. So he is an artist on, on that. He did quite a few of, of the pictures, um, but we're, he's like family to us. We're really close with him. And what we wanted to do with this um, bestiary, I guess that's come that we're planning on doing is we wanted to make it almost like an art book. So if, if there was a, a physical copy of it, a hard copy that you could get, it'd be one of those things that you'd put on your coffee table because, you know, you just open it up and there'd be this, you know, beautiful, like full page artwork that goes along with every beast that's in that book. Um, and th this is uh, Jason's probably... Um, piece like he he's invested a lot of time and love into it in, in creating these beasts come here what? come here come say hello <laughs> i'll just tell you he's like looking at me like why are you talking about me this is my husband jason <laughs> G'day. hey jason how's it going hey good thanks <laughs> oh awesome yeah <laughs> um so i I actually haven't cleared with him exactly how much I'm allowed to talk about that bestiary. Um, so I'm trying to be pretty, pretty vague, but Jason, don't worry. Uh, we're only listened to in 40 countries on six continents. So this is between us and my 1700 followers on social media. Uh, so that, that's okay. it. Uh, the, the, those are the only ones that know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not freaking out at all right now. <laughs> Well, well, Jason, we're just talking about you guys gaming with your family, with the children, you're running the campaign now, and we're super excited to share your family story with uh, thousands of families like yours who want to play D&D &D together and want to play tabletop role-playing games, and it's been fantastic. Thank you so much for, for popping in. And D, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much for coming out and, and doing this with us today. Oh, thank you, Nick. I, I really appreciate the opportunity and, and uh, just the opportunity to share our experiences and or have that opportunity to motivate other families to, to sit down at a table together.